Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today, um, we are going to be talking about possible Dolly. And in 2016, the exact same year as Colin, um, which Crystal Ball took away, <laughs> um, is Daniel. That is June 20th, 2016. But if... If Dolly doesn't form there, we also have another um, disturbance that could be another Dolly for June 23rd for 2012. So, what's going on right here? So, we do have possible Edward and possible Dolly. Um, none of them, in my opinion, are going to form at all. None. So, none of these are possibly going to form, and yeah. So, but, um, the National Hurricane Central does make these, you could say, real and happen. Um, so, disturbance number, if they do form, they will be a, um, subtropical storm for the storm that is, Near the Carolinas. Um, so let's go. 10% chance for cyclone formation in five days. Um, you guys can read it if you want. And then I'll also put it down there in the description. And then we do have the second disturbance too. Um, and we do have something that is... Um, trying to catch up in the Eastern Pacific, but here's my saying. <laughs> if they do not have a distinctive area where it might form, do not listen to them. Um, but it might form in this general area, but we do not know. So this is the intensity guidance. Okay, so this is the area where it makes landfall. From I suck at drawing with this to 48. So that's the area. So if it would be a tropical storm what the LGEM and the IVCN says before it makes, after it makes landfall, it will be a subtropical storm. And we also do have the ship model saying it will be tropical storm status. But look, so before it makes landfall. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One out of seven models still saying being tropical storm status before landfall. And two models of the seven says it'll go back up to tropical storm status. We'll go up into tropical storm status. So this is what the G. So this is what the GEPS model says. They all say landfall in North Carolina. So that's a for sure area for right real Wilmington is and then and then they kind of scatter around whenever it gets up northern and then they have physically no clue what they are doing <laughs> um so let's go on so this is so all all except a few says it's going to make landfall in South Carolina. So it's kind of a 50-50 chance on where it is going to make landfall. But the main area of concern is flooding down here and near um, from the start of the Outer Banks down to Mortal Beach. That is our area for concern for possible flooding. And we actually right now do have a flash flood warning for um, Hadris or around the Hadris area. 
so this is the GEFS model. Um, and they say it's going to make a landfall right on the line and then go into North Carolina and mainly stay in North Carolina. That is the main place that is staying, kind of sit in. But we don't see that it's going up into the capital city. We see that it is mainly going um, into Greensboro, Winston, Salem area. So if we... Sorry, if we, so let me just reload this page to see if any new updates. So we do see that little spin that you saw right there. That is the area. And then we see all this convection up here. So it is a very disorganized storm. So that is where the surface low pressure is located. And then we see right up here. And this is where all the convection is. And then here's the low pressure kind of sitting right on top of South Carolina. And then, so it's sitting right on top of South Carolina. And then we have this surface low. But, so, uh, so this low pressure is kind of keeping this surface low with it. So this low has to spin but due to this is going to come off and then die, die out, then this um, low pressure has time to roam around and kind of do whatever it wants. So, so we can definitely see blow up of convection in some spots, but none of them are near the storm, and that is what we need. So the low pressure is located right there, and then the so and then the main low pressure is right up, right on the border of South Carolina and North Carolina. And then we have this. So here's Wilmington, here's Myrtle Beach, and there's Charleston, and there is Hatteras. So those are the areas of where um, major cities are that is in this general region. Um, so let's go on over to the so water vapor. <laughs> so we can see. Uh, so we can definitely see that. Um, good water vapor and good humidity, but you can see that darker portion right around this general area, and then that is the dry air, and then you see right where the storm is located, right in that general area, and you see all that dark black air, which means low humidity which is really bad if you want a good system to form so let's go to the nam model so the nam model says there's a few little um areas where it could be but it doesn't really form and then yeah so it doesn't really form that much literally at all when i say it doesn't form i mean it doesn't form so, sorry if you had any, any background noises. Sorry. Um, so, there is the GFS model. It says it's going to make a lane for the 1014 right in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And just moves on northward. And it looks like this Greenland. So it might be a subtropical storm when it gets right next to Greenland. Who knows? Yeah, no clue what this storm's going to be. And it might be tropical. another tropical storm, Bertha, but in my opinion, it won't be. So actually what the CMC is saying is it will actually make a few landfalls with some islands and then all the sounds and then moving on northward but most of the generated rain will be up north um like near norfolk 
and Virginia Beach. Um, even though it is all the way down, like, right next to South Carolina. So, this is the icon model. So, the icon model says it makes landfall in the 10th or 10th storm. Exactly what both of did, just formed right off the bat and then makes landfall and then dies on out. So, this is what the GFS model is saying for wind. So, they are... It's already at tropical depression for winds, so if this storm just has better convection and lower wind shear, then we will have a good time and higher sea surface temperatures. So we do see right up here, that is kind of where you see that it generates 49.8 knots, which is around tropical storm status, but already has tropical... The pressure winds that are happening um, around the sides there. And then we, sorry. And then we, um, okay, so this is the CMC model. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, but I am laughing. So, this is what the um, CMC model shows, the Canadian model. So, it says it, um, the max winds is actually while it's out on sea. So, that is pretty good um, of 34 knot winds. Um... So, this is the wind shear. So, as you see right down there, um, the area that I am circulating in black is the area that you need to focus in. So, it makes a landfall, and the wind shear is horrendous. Um, so, the wind shear is very bad. It's not the best. Um, let's go on over to something humidity as you see with the water vapor model that i showed you you see that the white was the blue and then the dark brown was the um low um water vapor and humidity so here's the windy sea surface temperatures are pretty good but here is the jet stream um, right there, as you can see where that kind of little spins are. Right here is where the jet stream is. And this is where actually Arthur took his trip. And almost made landfall in North Carolina, but he did make landfall in Bermuda as a subtropical storm. So let's go on over to sea surface temperatures. So sea surface. So, this is the area of looking. So, pretty good sea surface temperatures, 27 to um, 20, 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. Oof. I don't know why that was so hard to say, but it was. Wow. And here is the La Nina status. So we see that the La Nina status is going up and back into El Nino, and then it'll probably dip back down. As we see, the latest value is um, negative 0 0.044, which isn't a fully La Nina. Well, guys, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.